Hey folks, Dan from DNN Custom Creations. It's been a long time since I made a video, but I wanted to show you a little bit of a thing we did today with uh, our plasma table. Uh, so I had a customer that needed uh, a number of these. Uh, actually, I'll explain the process. So they wanted to cut into three inch lengths. This is stainless tubing, 120 wall, uh, polished uh, stainless uh, tubing. And they wanted to cut in three inch lengths and then they wanted them split uh, half uh, into half. And the ends had to be square, and then when they were split, that had to be square. Uh, so uh, I cut them on the, the bandsaw and put them in the lathe and trued the two ends, but I was uh, trying to figure out the best way to split these in half. <clears throat> you know, with that kind of a wall thickness, it's a little, little tricky to do on like a vertical bandsaw and try and keep them split in the center. Uh, and so I actually finally decided to try and use the plasma table, the CNC plasma table or Langmire, and make a cut on one side, turn it over, make the cut on the other side, and split that in half. Now, um, that sounds like it's a, a little bit of a challenge on the table, but I'll show you exactly what I did. And it worked out great. I've, uh, I've got these done. They needed 14 of them done. I've got them done and already shipped off. I got this piece of a residual left and I'll show you what I did. Okay, uh, another step in uh, doing this is I took out a couple of the slats, gave me a little room to put the vise in, in the water. Uh, I, on my torch, I moved it up as far as possible. Uh, you can see I'm on uh, scope rings. These are uh, scope rings mounted to a, an aluminum plate and allows me then to lift that torch up, get extra height, which I'm obviously gonna need. That uh, vise is just a cheap Harbor Freight uh, drill vise, uh, but it's got a gap in the bottom that allows it each time I put one of these three inch uh, pieces of tube in, it self aligns uh, into that vise. And because the ends are square, then when I tighten it up, uh, and you don't have to crank down on it because it's not really gonna move, um, yeah, it's pretty well self-centered. <clears throat> so, the other thing I had to do in order to make sure that uh, when it came, you know, in this direction uh, and cut split line, that it wasn't at an angle. Uh, it, it was directly along the axis of that cylinder. And the way I achieved that was I just simply mounted a um, dial indicator and uh, I got it to the point where uh, when it transverse from you know one side to the to the other, there's not a lot of motion. I didn't try and get it dead nuts on, but it's pretty close. It's within you know maybe a couple thousands, and so that assures me that when this thing makes that cut, it's directly along the axis of that tube, and it had to be that way uh, for the application. The ends had to be square, and then when you lay the half shells down, they had to also be square. All right, uh, let me uh, do a couple of things. I'll show you a, a couple other steps that I did uh, in order to uh, make this cut. Okay, the next step was uh, finding the center line uh, of that tubing. Just use a simple uh, center lining uh, square. I'm not sure if that's what you're called. <laughs> but, uh, and then so, you know, made a mark along that center. Then, uh, made sure that I could see that from the ends. Okay, once I had that mark where uh, I could see it, put it back in the vise, and here you can see there's the mark, and now I have lined my uh, little laser pointer up with that mark, and um, that laser pointer has been calibrated so that where the laser pointer uh, shines, that is where the cut is going to be. And so now I'm just gonna set up to make a straight cut and uh, we'll make that straight cut and then uh, turn this thing over and line that up again and we'll cut this thing in half. Okay, here's I'm set up uh, to do a straight cut uh, in the minus Y direction. 
Uh, notice that I'm using a cut length of 2.9. Um, this is a residual piece that's not actually three. Uh, and in fact, it's only about uh, two and a half. Uh, and you'll see why I'm using the 2.9 in a second. Uh, since this is a 120 wall um, and aluminum, I'm using a standard um, nozzle. So the cut speed is 90. Uh, I'm going to delay a pierce delay at only 0.2 seconds because I'm actually going to start off of uh, the item. And notice that I am not going to use the initial height sensor uh, in this particular case. And here's the reason. If you start, if you use the torch height uh, control and the initial height sensor where it comes down and touches the item, uh, well, obviously then the nozzle has to be uh, on that item. The problem is if you do the pierce on the item, even if you're right at the edge, uh, it's going to leave a, a larger uh, hole basically than the kerf. So I start this thing off of the edge and um, therefore I don't need a pierce delay. The only reason I'm using 0.2 is so that it gets the torch uh, up to full power and, and going before it actually starts to move. So let me show you uh, where I'm actually starting this thing. Let me go to a, a zero. Uh, I'm going to go here to, to set to work zero where I'm going to start this thing. And you'll notice that, let's uh, see if I could show you where my little laser point is, is actually off, uh, not quite a quarter of an inch uh, from the edge. So it's actually going to fire and start there, and then it's going to move until it makes the cut. I'm also going to extend it uh, about the same amount on the other side, so I make sure I get a full cut. So that's where that uh, 2.9 inch length came from. So if it was an actual three inch part, uh, then it would wind up, you know, being uh, where I'd start the same place, about uh, 200 thousandths on one side and then go 200 thousandths farther. So it'd wind up to be about 3.4 in that length. All right, uh, the other thing now, because I'm not using uh, the initial height sensor, I need to set the torch at the correct uh, height. And in uh, the tables, it says uh, do the pierce at 150 thousandths and then do the cut at 60 thousandths. Well, I'm not piercing because it's going to be off of the edge. And, and so all I need to do is move, the, pay, uh, move the, the torch down until I'm at 60 thousandths. I just simply do that uh, with a, oh, sorry, with a, uh, uh, you know, the gauges can't do this with two hands. I basically set that using feeler gauges, uh, 60 thousandths of an inch feeler gauges. So that's how I get set up ready to start to cut. Okay, the last thing I do, uh, because I don't want a, any of the scale to be getting on the torch, is I just simply slide a, a piece of material. This happens to be, I don't know, it's like quarter inch, uh, one and a half bar and stick it underneath so when the torch breaks through the edge of the item, uh, the scale builds up on that instead of the uh, vise. Okay, let's see what happens here. Oh, that was a dry run. I guess that's not going to work. We'll do it for real. Uh, notice uh, that when you, when you set up to do this and you don't use initial height sensor, you're going to get a warning telling you, hey, you know, you're not using that... Uh, the, the torch height control, that's okay. As long as you've got it set up to cut at the right height, uh, then you're still good to go. All right, here we go. All right, there's the first cut, and you notice how wide the gap has become. That's a lot bigger than the kerf. Uh, this happened, this tubing obviously is under a little bit of stress, and so once you make that cut, then it opens up a little bit. Now all I need to do is turn this thing over, find that same mark on the other side, which we used uh, with the gauge that gave it, made sure we're splitting in half, and repeat the process. So let me get set up and we'll do that. 
Okay, we've uh, rotated it 180 degrees, lined up our um, laser pointer with the uh, dot. So when we cut this thing, we should be now uh, cutting this bar into half. So here we go. There's what the scale looks like. That would have been on the uh, on the vise had I not put this uh, inside. You can see basically uh, why that's in there. Protect the vise a little bit. I don't think it would damage the vise, but uh, it would uh, you know coat it with that material. All right, so here we are with. Uh, I'm not sure you can see this. I'm, uh, let me stop this and, and we'll bring you around to the to the table and take a look at it. All right, here's the end results. Uh, here are the two halves, and you can see there, you know, we did a pretty good job about uh, trying to make sure that they were cut in half. Um, I have uh, just run a flap wheel over the edges to take off the, the scale. Uh, that's the one that I've done that for. I left one of the edges so you can see basically what it, uh, what it looks like before you remove that uh, scale. Not too bad. Uh, this is, uh, you know, I'm not using argon. That's just an air cut in stainless, which uh, oftentimes doesn't give you a very good uh, uh, cut. But in this particular case, it wasn't too bad. So that's basically what I did to uh, uh, meet this customer's requirement. Um, I'm pretty happy with the results. And uh, if you need to cut pipe, uh, that may be one of the options. You can use your plasma table to do so. Okay. Hey, thanks for watching. Sorry it's uh, been so long since I've made the videos. Uh, I've, been, uh, I've been pretty busy, but uh, I'll try and uh, add some more, try and get back on track a little bit. Thanks for watching. Dan from DNN Custom Creations.